Welcome Dollar Tree fans! I've shared hundreds of Dollar Tree hacks and DIYs with you this year already, and these are the top 25 absolute best of the year. Hi everyone, I'm Shannon, the Daily DIYer. Now let's get right into these brilliant ideas using simple Dollar Tree items. Their paper towel holders are actually very amazing because there are so many different ways to utilize these, and I'm going to show you how to take two of them in this hack to extend it to make a toilet paper holder. It's really, really simple to take some heavy duty wire cutters or pliers and trim off the top part so you disconnect the top from the bottom. A little trick here is to just kind of pinch it at the bottom where these connect and then you can come in with your hands and just kind of wiggle it back and forth and it will actually just snap right off. And safety always first, I would recommend wearing a pair of safety gloves at this point to protect your hands. Now we can take that piece that we just broke off and attach it onto another paper towel holder. To do that, we're gonna need a couple things. Both you can also find at Dollar Tree. We're gonna use some super glue on the top there and then we're gonna wrap it with some electrical tape. This is gonna bind them all together and it's also gonna allow our glue to dry while it sets up. I would say let this lay flat and dry for about 30 minutes and then you can take it outside and spray paint it or you can even leave it silver if that matches your bathroom decor. Since the electrical tape was black on mine, I hit it with a couple coats of a matte black spray paint and you can also even hit it with some clear matte sealer too and that will further uh, protect your paint so it'll last longer for you. And it really is so simple to then just add your toilet paper rolls on here. Makes it handy, makes great storage, looks really nice, and it was only $2.50 to make. I love shopping at Dollar Tree because you can take everyday items like these bathroom accessories and really dress them up so they actually look high end and it's gonna save you a bundle of money. So I grabbed one of these toothbrush holders along with two of their soap pumps and we're actually going to make them into sort of a pottery barn knockoff. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the tops. These are plastic pumps tape off the bottom and then we're going to spray paint the tops with a black spray paint. This is really going to make it look more like metal versus the white plastic. These I would for sure recommend using a clear matte spray over since they're going to be used quite a bit. You want to make sure you protect that paint. Give that a couple of coats and now we're going to work on the bases, the ceramic bases. You're going to need a few paintbrushes, smaller ones and a thicker one. We're going to create a faux marble finish using some chalk paint. So I have silver lining and elephant. This is by the brand Waverly that you can find at Walmart. I love this paint. It sticks to just about anything. So we're going to come in with the lighter gray paint first with our thin paintbrush. We're trying to create our marble veining here. Once you have the lighter color, then you can come and add some highlights of the darker. And then with your bigger paintbrush, kind of go over it with some water in your paintbrush. This is going to help spread some of that paint out and soften it. And then also you'll want to go over this with a paper towel to dab off any extra. That is going to really give us that faux marble finish. You'll just go around all of the sides of your containers and then you can also spray these with a clear matte spray paint when they're finished drying too. And then you can add the tops back on these and they went from something that looked like a Dollar Tree item to one that looks much more like it came from Pottery Barn. Another simple hack here is to use one of Dollar Tree's glass cutting boards and use that in your bathroom on your sink. It will protect your countertops and it gives you a nice little raised surface to then add these new containers to. So these turned out really, really chic and I love when that happens, especially when they're functional items. So you can add soap, hand sanitizer, lotion to these and actually use them. Also in our bathroom, we have this windowsill that needed a little bit of dressing up. So I also came across these really great votive holders at Dollar Tree too. Very chic looking and they have a really pretty wood little container or stand that they sit into. You can also flip them over so they can sit on top of these little stands too. I'm going to leave mine the way they came so they don't fall off my windowsill. And then remember we also put some marbling effect on our toothbrush holder but instead of a toothbrush holder I'm going to use this as a little vase so it kind of creates a nice little set in our bathroom bathroom. 
These are just some greenery that I also found at Dollar Tree too. So you can really find some beautiful high-end looking things at Dollar Tree without the high price tag. The other thing that I exclusively only get at Dollar Tree are their votive candles. They are so affordable. They pretty much always work. You'll get a dud in there every once in a while, but you can put those in your little candle holders so that they're safe. You can flip them on and off when you want them to. They're pretty during the day just to look at, but then at nighttime, you can flip the lights off and you have a nice little nightlight in your bathroom too. Of course, this is another one of my absolute favorite hacks using one of the canvases from Crafter Square. This one is an 11 by 14 size. We're gonna make a very chic looking placemat. So of course you're gonna need a placemat for each place setting that you have. We are gonna go ahead and paint this. This is in the color Plaster by Waverly, again from Walmart. I'll make sure to link all the supplies that I'm using in today's video down in the description box to make it easy for you to find if you're looking for these colors or tools too. This is another item I'll link. It's from Amazon. It's painter's tape, but actually comes in half inch size. It comes smaller too. And I'm using it to create a real kind of simple, modern striped effect. This rug, which is a hearth and hands rug from Target was my inspiration for this placemat. I'm using the color ink. Uh, chalk paint to add in this detail. Really, really simple, just two stripes on one side and at the bottom. And then when you remove your painter's tape, you're left with a beautiful design you can use as a placemat. I would also recommend sealing it with some Fabric Shield Scotch Guard. I'll link that down below too. That way, if you have any spills, you can just wipe those off really, really easily. For that project, we used flat placemats, but for this next one, we're gonna use the one with the wood frame. You can see there is a difference here. We want to make the most beautiful framed window. And I'm also gonna show you a fun way to dress it up too. This is a really simple way to remove the canvas off of those canvases. You take a really sharp X-Acto knife and run it down the side of all of your canvases. I will link this Fiskars brand down in the description box below too. This one is my go-to, it works and it is super sharp and comfortable to use. So what we're doing is again, going around all of the edges and we're gonna take that canvas off. Do not throw the canvas away. That is not cheap to buy. So keep that on hand because there's other really great projects you can use that canvas for. In the future, just stack it up because we're gonna be making about nine of, or needing about nine of these canvases. So you're gonna have quite a bit of extra left over. We're gonna take some pliers, rip the extra canvas off the back. You don't have to worry about removing the staples. It's gonna be on the back and you're not gonna see it. So get all of that extra canvas off there. And then, like I said, we're gonna be using nine of these canvases total. However, if you want a bigger framed window or uh, a bigger design, of course, add more. Or if you want a smaller one, you don't have to use quite so many either. I wish it went this fast, but this is what it looks like once you finally have all the canvases removed and they're nice and clean. You can even go over them with a little piece of sandpaper too if you want. We're gonna be putting this together with a combination of wood glue and hot glue. We're gonna make three rows of three for this. So the way I attached these together was to actually put the wood glue on first and then hot glue right over the top of it. The wood glue is super strong once it dries, but it does take, I would say, a good 24 hours to dry all the way. So if you add some hot glue in there first, it's gonna give you some working time right away. And so I did the three rows first before attaching all three of those rows together. We're also gonna be using some paint stir sticks to reinforce this. That way it is super strong and it's not gonna come apart. So these are, again, linked down in the description box. You can find them really, really inexpensively on Amazon. I even cut a few down to make sure these all, all the little cross pieces and connecting pieces had that stick on the back. We're gonna dress this up with these beautiful wood accent pieces from Hobby Lobby. These are really inexpensive too. You can find them in their wood decor section. And I found this pretty piece to go right on the top. This is kind of the showstopper piece and the main piece and then some other smaller pieces to then go in the corners and then a couple more different ones that are gonna go on the bottom corners. 
You'll attach these on there just like you did with the other frames with some hot glue and wood glue combination. And then at this point you can paint it or stain it. I really love the natural wood color and the applique pieces really match the solid wood frame. So I just left mine plain, but of course you create yours to match your decor and in your favorite style. But I think this looks so incredibly chic, kind of looks a little antique -y, a little bit far farmhouse but depending on how you style it and how you use it in your home of course the look can be made however you like to this next canvas hack yep we're gonna be needing some wax paper this one's gonna blow your mind you're never have, probably have thought to use wax paper in this type of way we're gonna use four of these smaller canvases again these are the ones with the wood frames so we're gonna remove that canvas the same way we did in the last project just trimming around the edge and pulling off the extra from the back. So now we have four of these smaller frames and we're going to flip them to the back side. This is where the wax paper comes into play. We're gonna add some hot glue to the backs of these frames and then flip them right over on top of the wax paper. Let that sit and dry and then we're gonna cut out the wax paper to fit the size of the frame. The easiest way to do this is take your X-Acto knife and run it around the outside edge. You'll get a nice clean cut and one that is the exact size of your frame so you don't have any extra around the edges. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna glue all of these together in a rectangular shape to create a beautiful and simple and also an expensive lantern, but you can also use this as a planter too. And I'll show you what that looks like once we get these put together. So you can just use hot glue for this. If you want it extra sturdy, add some wood glue in there too. That is going to really reinforce it and make this last and last. So we started with just kind of creating the front piece, two side pieces, and then adding a top piece on. But this we're actually gonna flip up so it sits this way. And here's what it looks like on our little console table this is a dollar tree led candle yep they sure do have those too if you can find a good one test these in the store before you buy them because there are quite a few duds when it comes to those you can just sit that right on your tabletop with your lantern over it it is such a beautiful look and of course i have to show you what it looks like with the lights off too because of course that's when it really really comes to life See, these LED candles really do have a realistic glow. So keep your eye out for them, just avoid those duds. And then I also wanted to show it to you as a planter. I put a little raised tray in there to lift up my plant, but so simple and looks super chic. Now we're going to head over to the bathroom section and we're gonna grab a plunger or two or three or more. And we're gonna make a little hanging rail first. We wanna get rid of that end that has this little spirals on it though. So we just used a miter box. Again, I'll link mine down in the description box. And we're also going to pair it with one of these over the door hooks, again, from Dollar Tree. I love this for organization. I'll link one of my favorite videos for organization down in the description box below too. This one, we're gonna use this in a little bit different way though. We're gonna actually rock the hooks back and forth that's gonna pop them off really easy no sawing or anything needed and we're gonna pop all of those hooks off we're gonna use them on this little rail we're gonna make with our toilet plunger handle so you can see we already have a hook shape going on but we need to make another hook at the other end because we're gonna use these on this handle to hang stuff. So we're gonna pinch our hook together. That's gonna make it a little bit more tight to sit on our handle and not accidentally come off. Then you'll need some pliers and the end that we snapped off, you're just gonna curl that up in a smaller hook. So this is the idea. We're gonna do that to all of the hooks. There were six on our starter over the door hook. So you'll end up with six hooks here and you can use them all or not depending on where you're gonna put this. So this was a really simple, quick and easy process. And now that our hooks are ready to go, we can work on hanging our rail on the wall. So this is faux leather. You can get this from Dollar Tree too. I just cut a piece, folded it in half, and then took a screw and screwed it right into the wall. So we have a nice loop on the end. You'll space these out so that then you can insert the handle and it will stay suspended from that. So you want yours 
less far apart than your handles. You have some sticking out on both sides and then you can add your hooks onto the handle. And now's the part where you get to be creative. You can, this is just one idea, you can hang buckets. These are from Dollar Tree too. They come in a set of three and they have these nice handles on them that slip right onto your hooks. And then you can fill those buckets with whatever you need extra storage for. So this is just some craft supplies. You can use it for office supplies. You could use it in your laundry room for laundry items. So sky is really the limit as far as what you can use this for. Or you could use it in an entryway. You could use it next to a changing table for baby items. And a really pretty way is actually just use it for decor. So I have mine styled with a wreath and a sign and some wood beads. Just get creative, make it work for you. This next one, we're gonna need two plungers for. We're gonna cut the first one, just the spirals off one end. And the second one, we're gonna cut exactly in half. So this is what those look like after the stickers are removed, they're cut down and sanded. We're gonna make another towel style holder with the help of one of these wood discs that you can find at Hobby Lobby. This is another hack to use those plungers. If you have lots of these left over, don't throw them away. There's other ways you can actually utilize them and using them as a paint tray is a great way because you can actually wash them off and use them over and over again. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just giving everything a coat of brown acrylic paint to give it sort of a faux wood stain, but it dries much more quickly. We also need to drill a hole right in the very center of our round wood plaque. Using a small drill bit to do that, we wanna go all the way through because this is how we're gonna attach our large handle onto the bottom. It also helps to drill a hole in the bottom of your larger handle to give it a pilot hole so you don't split your wood. To attach these together, we're gonna co come from the bottom with a large wood screw up through the bottom until it's sticking out just a little bit and then you can set your handle on top of there and finish screwing these together until it's tight. And it's really that simple. If you don't like the metal paper towel holder look that Dollar Tree carries, this is a great and simple way to make your own more modern and high-end looking paper towel holder for your kitchen and it looks really nice on your countertops. A whole nother idea is to use this in your bathroom as another option for holding your toilet paper rolls. And then we're gonna take this idea and take it one step farther. This is the exact same piece, except I cut the end of it off. So since I cut that off, I'm gonna take some paint, cover that up, you'll never know. We're also gonna take our drill again and drill a hole a couple inches down from the top for our second piece to go onto. And again, creating a pilot hole is going to save your wood from splitting when you go to screw these together and actually make it a lot easier too. So again, just using another wood screw going through just a little bit until we can connect the smaller piece on and tightening it. The reason I cut the top of this piece off is because I wanted to add a decorative element. This is a, a doorknob or a drawer, a drawer knob. I think it's probably more of a drawer knob. Um, and I wanted to add that as a decorative element to the top. So again, using some Dollar Tree super glue, we're just gonna glue this guy right onto the top. I'm pretty sure I found this beautiful knob on clearance, it was like on a piece of wood, already a decorative piece from Hobby Lobby that was like 75% off. And I didn't like the wood piece, but I love the knobs and it came with like three of them. So I'm glad I did that and kept it because this is the perfect accessory and sort of finial for the top of this towel holder. So this is how you can actually use it on your countertops to then display your decorative towels or even the towels that you use daily. Obviously, I love purchasing inexpensive items, flipping them to look high end because it saves a bundle of money. This garden dish is gonna help us knock off the Studio McGee dish that is from Target, retails for $30, but ours is only gonna cost $1.25, a huge savings. You are gonna need a heat gun. I'll link mine down below in the description box. You're also gonna need a pair of heavy duty pliers. And again, safety first. 
You're gonna need some gloves. We don't wanna burn our hands. Cause we are gonna take our pliers. We're gonna clamp onto the edge of our Dollar Tree garden dish and then slowly heat up with our heat gun, the plastic around it. It is going to start to melt and mold and pull into the middle of our bowl. You wanna do this really, really slowly though because it's super easy to crack your bowl and you don't wanna have to start over. We're gonna move over just a little bit to another area alongside and do the same thing. You're gonna pull into the middle of the bowl and then on the inside, or in the, between those pieces, we're gonna pull out. And that's what's gonna create that wave on the edge of our bowl. You're gonna go ahead and repeat this all the way around. If you love Dollar Tree DIYs and high-end hacks, I would love to have you subscribe to the Daily DIYer channel and turn on your notifications so you never miss another video like this one. All right, so now that we have that all the way around the outside of our dish, it's looking pretty good, but we want it to look more like that Studio McGee version. So we're pulling out our Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. This is almost identical to the color of the original one. We are gonna take a foam paintbrush and we're gonna cover the outside of this with two coats, letting it dry in between coats. And then this is kind of what it is going to look like once that has dried. The inside of this bowl is gonna be pretty shiny from the plastic, which we don't want. We want this to have a uh, more ceramic-y look. So we are also gonna flip this to the top side and give the inside two coats of paint too. Also, make sure to go around the edges of this to make sure those have a good coat of paint too. And then once that is dry, you can use it. So you can use it on a end table to collect glasses, remote controls, actually give it a purpose, or you can use it for decorative purposes and add some items that match your decor. Definitely not a food safe item too, so don't put it in your kitchen with candy or something in it but pretty close knockoff to the original. Next, I have some amazing, brilliant hacks using dryer sheets. Now, I know not everybody's a big fan of them, but if you don't mind them, I have a video dedicated to probably over 20 different ways to use that, and these are a few of my absolute favorites. If you've never tried these before, give it a go. It's so inexpensive because you get so many sheets in a pack. You can run these over your blinds. It's gonna help clean them, and it's also gonna help repel dirt in the future and dust, and it's also going to make your home smell nice and fresh too. So easy, just run it over both sides of your blinds and toss when you're done. Another idea here for dusting is using one of Dollar Tree's brooms. It comes in two sets now. It used to, you could buy a whole broom, but now you have to buy the handle and the bottom. You'll also wanna grab some of this furniture polish and one of their cleaning towels. I love using micro microfiber cloths when I'm cleaning. They even have ones that are antimicrobial, which means it's going to kill any kind of germs. So those are the ones I usually pick up. We're gonna assemble our broom or you can use a broom that you already have. We're gonna cover the bottom with that microfiber towel put a simple rubber band over it to hold it into place. And then you can use that with your duster spray to then help you clean baseboards without having to lean over and reach. We're gonna grab out our dryer sheets again. This pack from Dollar Tree is the one with the best deal because it has the most in it. It's a bonus pack that comes with 55, so it breaks down to only about five cents per sheet. So these are good for using around the house, maybe not in your dryer for your clothes, but these are great for also dusting and cleaning your baseboards because it's also gonna help repel that dirt and dust in the future. This is another great way to use the broom with the microfiber cloth on it like we did to clean the baseboards. But if your house collects a lot of dust bunnies like our old house does, this is a really easy way to kind of collect those and dust your floors without doing like a big sweeping event. And the cloth is actually going to gather a lot of those particles into the cloth so you don't have so much that then you need to bring in a dust pan for. 
And this is probably my favorite dryer sheet hack of all. It's actually to wipe down our couches. The backs always seem to be a dirt and dust collector and also the backs of the arms. So I like to rub a dryer sheet over the couch. Not only does it dust and clean, but it also refreshes it. So it has a nice clean scent. I'm also pretty much obsessed with Dollar Tree's planters. They have so many different colors, sizes, styles. They really have upped their game. I'm gonna show you a few different hacks using them. Of course, the price of $1.25 is hard to beat too. We're gonna start by making a garden urn. This is one of their sort of medium sized pots. It's also kind of the color that we're wanting even though I'm gonna end up painting it too. We're gonna need some other pieces I'm kind of throwing up the sizes of these plaques on there and also a couple round plaques up on there and a couple smaller sizes of planters from Dollar Tree too. You'll see as we go through this how it all comes together. We're also gonna be using some super glue from Dollar Tree and some Total Tech. I will link the Total Tech construction adhesive down in the description box below. To put all these pieces together to get that urn look that we're going for, we're gonna take those two sizes of square plaques, use that construction adhesive and flip these so that the tops actually meet in the middle. So this is gonna be the bottom of our urn. We're gonna add a decorative element using these two round ones that fit perfectly on top of each other. Again, you wanna take your construction adhesive and add some to the bottom of the smaller plaque and then set it on top of the bigger plaque. Let those sit. It does take about an hour for this to set up. We're going to then piece this smaller Dollar Tree pot on to the bottom of our square plaque using this construction adhesive. It's super strong and it is perfect for outside use too if you're gonna put this out in your garden. So here's what that looks like. We're then gonna take our construction adhesive again, put it on the bottom of that pot and then put our round plaques on top of there. So now you can finally start to see how the base of this urn is coming together. We then want to add the bigger pot on top of here. So right now it looks like all these little pieces, but once we paint it, it's gonna become one big piece and it's gonna look really, really pretty. So we are taking our construction adhesive again, adding some blobs, making sure it's good and covered before setting the larger Dollar Tree pot on top. It helps to put something heavy on the inside so that these really have a chance to bond together before it's dry. I actually just used some Dollar Tree River Rock in there, worked perfectly and let this sit for a good hour. Once it's set up, you can go ahead and take it outside and spray paint it. This one is a oil rubbed bronze spray paint. I'll link this down below too. And if you're gonna be using this for live plants, it probably wouldn't hurt to also drill a few holes on the sides, kind of towards the bottom. So that way it's not so noticeable, but it also will create some drainage. I just have a faux boxwood ball in mine. I didn't think about what that was for a minute. Just sat that in there. This is just a decorative element for me, but look how pretty it is. Definitely wouldn't think it's made from Dollar Tree items. Now we're gonna make a super pretty and easy, easy lantern. Another Dollar Tree planter here. We're gonna take a hot glue gun. I'll link mine down below too. This one you can find for like 10 bucks on Amazon and it's got a base. I love it because it just sits up and it doesn't burn your countertop while it's laying down. And this one also has a precision tip in it, so it works great for detail work when you're crafting, and it also works great for burning holes in plastic like I'm doing here. I would suggest opening a window or doing this in a really well ventilated place because this is gonna put off some uh, gases from melting the plastic but this goes really, really quickly. You could do this out in your garage even and just go around your pot until you have a bunch of random holes. You will take some pliers and you'll need to pull out the inside that kind of forms the little rings that form. And then I also took my pliers and kind of routed out the holes to make those larger too. And that made sure that I'm gonna be able to see the light on the inside of this lantern once we put the candle in here. To do that, again, this is another Dollar Tree candle and then some Dollar Tree River Rocks to hold it down since this is gonna go outside on our back patio. It looks nice during the day, but of course, I always love to show you at night too 
what this looks like when once the sun goes down and then you can put this on a back patio you can use this uh, at night if you're doing like a bonfire or a get together and it's safe for kids since it's just a battery operated candle. Now let's take a tabletop planter and very simply turn it into a hang planter in only a couple steps. And of course this planter is again from Dollar Tree. I'm using the same kind of process as the last one using my hot glue gun to melt holes into the side. You want these sort of spaced out from each other but towards the top of your planter. Again, you're gonna need your needle nose pliers to kind of route out the holes to make sure they are big enough. We're gonna be feeding in some jute. And once you have this step done, you're gonna flip it over to the other side and mimic it and repeat it as best as you can so it looks the same as the other side. All right, so we got those holes in there. We're gonna take jute. This is four ply jute. You can find this for about $5 at Walmart. I'll link it down below too. This stuff is heavy duty, great for outside. It's gonna hold our heavy pot once it has all the soil and the plants in it and everything. And it's also gonna hold up outside. So we're gonna take our ends of our jute and we're gonna feed it to the inside of the pot. So we have this sort of holder on the outside and the strings and the tails are on the inside. You're gonna need to do that on both sides. So you have two strings total, one on each side, pull those to the middle, and then you'll gather all four of the tails together and pull them to the top and simply just tie a knot. These are so simple and so quick to make. You can make several of these all at one time. So you have a bunch to put on your patio, your porch. You could hang them from shepherd, shepherd's hooks. And you could even use these inside your house too because I know the boho look is super popular right now. So you could add faux plants to this or real plants. Back into Dollar Tree we go this time for their amazing foam wreaths. All of their styrofoam is actually amazing and wonderful and I exclusively buy it from Dollar Tree, but especially these wreaths. So we're gonna take six of these and we're gonna make a planter. Now, if you want a taller one, you can use more. If you need a smaller one, you can use less. So get creative with this, make this work for you. I'm gonna be using this double-sided tape to make this almost mess free. I'm just putting two on each side and we're going to use those to interlock our wreaths one on top of each other. Again, this is a product I'll link down in the description box below. I love this stuff. It is permanent. It is heavy duty. It is weather safe and it creates a no mess style project in a lot of cases and it works for pretty much every kind of material especially since styrofoam likes to melt with hot glue and certain different types of glue. This one you don't have to worry about. So we're gonna put all of these one on top of each other. Like I said, I have six of them total and you can see they are not coming apart. They're not going anywhere. And now we can move on to decorating them. So this is a messy part because uh, you definitely don't wanna use spray paint on something like this because the spray paint will eat the styrofoam, so you will have to come in and paint it by hand. I'm using chalk paint because it sticks to everything and anything, and it really was just that simple to give it a couple coats of paint to create a planter. I just have a regular potted plant in there. You could put it on a riser too if you'd like. Now, of course, I could not leave this one out. You guys know I am in love with the colorful rainbows because my craft room is just super duper colorful and I needed, of course, another rainbow to add to it. So for this one, we're gonna cut a styrofoam wreath in half. I grabbed one of each color of a ribbon. You can even find some of this at Dollar Tree. I'm so impressed that they're now carrying Olfre brand, which is a legit good ribbon brand. You can find it at craft stores and Walmart. So to see it in Dollar Tree was so, was such a good surprise. We're gonna use our hot glue and we're gonna start wrapping our wreath with our ribbon. Just kind of changing the colors in the colors of the rainbow. I also really tried to create one that was not solid colors, but you could if you wanted. I really like the different prints and patterns on the ribbon to give it even more character. You can also find me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram if you're looking for even more simple, inexpensive, and easy Dollar Tree DIYs. You can find those linked down in the description box below. 
And here's what it looks like after it's been completely wrapped. So, so cute, but we can't forget about covering those ends up with some clouds. So these are literally cotton balls from Dollar Tree. You could use white pom-poms too. This is much cheaper though. Using some hot glue to attach them on one at a time and also kind of adding some bulk to the bottom too to build it out and add a few more to the bottom as well. This was such a fun project fun for a kid's room, a nursery, or your craft room like you can see here. Terracotta pots are also another one of those crafting items that are super affordable, inexpensive. You can find them affordably at the craft store, but you can also find smaller ones at Dollar Tree too. We're going to be pairing some of these Dollar Tree candles with some three and a half inch terracotta pots, which you can also find a Dollar Tree. And we're going to make our own terracotta pots. These are wood wicks and they come with these little stands. I'll link them down in the description box below. You can use regular wicks if you want, but these give like a fun crackle effect, which I just love. We're gonna cover up the hole in the bottom and take some super glue. You wanna insert your wood wick into the metal base that's included and then use your super glue to attach the base into the bottom. Let this sit up for at least about 30 minutes before going on to the next step. Now disclaimer for this next step, safety first. Again, we are gonna be using very hot melted wax. So you wanna make sure that you are being super careful and you don't get burned by the hot water or the melted wax. So turn your stove on medium, medium high, put a pot of water on the stove and then insert your Dollar Tree candles. It does take 15 minutes or more. You wanna make sure this is good and boiling so that it will melt the wax. And then once it's completely melted, take some tongs and you can remove the wick out of the bottom of this. And you can actually use this in your terracotta pots instead of the wood wicks and reuse them totally up to you. But we do wanna save these cause they will work for future projects if you wanna save them. And at this point you wanna use some oven mitts to remove the hot glass with the melted wax and then pour that into your terracotta pots. Save the glass jar. Again, you can use these for another project later down the road and you just fill those up before that wax sets up, you can also add essential oils to it. So peppermint, lemon, and citronella are great for bug repellent. So these candles will work great outside. So I added citronella to both of them and then I added peppermint to one and lemon to the other just to have kind of a variety. I mix that all together and then you'll let this sit up and then you can trim the wicks and use them outside. I will say here, I did not cut my wick down quite low enough. It was kind of difficult with the scissors that I was using. I would suggest cutting this wick down farther closer to the wax because it does create a pretty large flame. Now, once it gets going, it does burn down and it does calm down. So it's just kind of a tip if you don't want to start out with a big flame, but it's so pretty. It's lovely to listen to the crackles and it's a great bug repellent, but you can put different essential oils in there as well and use it in your home. I think we all just love the solar lights at Dollar Tree. They have so many different varieties now, and this one is just one of the typical regular ones. We're gonna dress it up with some of Dollar Tree's glass beads and the help of their super glue. Thank goodness they have super glue at Dollar Tree because I tend to use it for a lot of projects. I am gonna be pairing this with some hot glue too because again, the hot glue will set up quicker so you can keep moving on with your project whereas the super glue takes a little bit longer to dry. We're just literally taking each one of the glass beads, adding some super glue, adding some hot glue and attaching them all the way around. I would suggest starting at the top of your solar light and working your way to the bottom. 
And then fun ways to display these are you don't necessarily even have to have a yard. You can add these to mason jars or vases and put them in your windows. Of course, they're great on porches too. I love the glow of the colored beads that this adds. You can add multiples to a vase. And of course you can use these in the more traditional way, lining them down a walkway. Dollar Tree has lots of great candles, but I was really surprised to find floating candles in store because they are pretty pricey at craft stores and at department stores. So if you see them, grab them. They're going to save you a bundle versus other places. This is also a bubble vase from Dollar Tree filled about three quarters of the way to the top with regular water, adding some essential oils in there and some rosemary to create another bug repellent style candle. And then all you have to do is add your floating candle to the top and use these outdoors to keep the bugs away. I have some fun outdoor hacks for you too. This first one, you're gonna need a simple pool noodle and also a broom handle, of course, both from Dollar Tree. We're gonna take this pool noodle and cut it down and create our own handmade squeegee. And I'm just using a regular knife to cut this down to about three foot long. And then we need to add our handle to this. We're gonna take some scissors or you can use a sharp knife and just cut an X right in the center there. And that is going to give us a little space that we can then grab our handle and use some super glue to help us attach the handle into this to create our squeegee. It also helps to add some super glue, not just to the hole in the pool noodle, but also onto the handle itself. You just kind of poke it in there, twist it, let this sit for at least an hour or overnight would really be better in this case before then using it. It works so, so good to then rid decks, patios of excess water, and it is so cheap, so easy, and it is so useful. Now we're gonna use an everyday laundry basket from Dollar Tree is an outdoor awesome storage solution for our garden hose. Now my basket had a little hole in the bottom and I didn't wanna throw it away because it was still useful. So it actually comes in perfect for this hack. It's so easy to take your hose, coil it up and then put it into the basket for storage. I don't understand why garden hose storage is so incredibly inexpensive, but this idea of course only costs you $1.25 and it's plastic, so it is water resistant, has holes in it, so your garden hose has space to dry and just keeps everything looking nice, neat, and organized. This next hack is great if you love to garden. You're gonna grab one of these trays from Dollar Tree. They're awesome, they're on wheels. So basically they're a little plant tray so you can move your plants around, but here's a different idea and use for it. If you take it out while you're gardening and you have a concrete surface like I do, you can put heavy items onto it like soil and then you can move it around as you need it as you are gardening and it kind of saves you from having having to lift heavy, heavy, something heavy over and over and over again. Dollar Tree also had amazing nautical decor for this summer. And so I grabbed a lot of it and I had a whole video dedicated of how to use it. But these are my favorites from that video. This one is using one of the jute balls that Dollar Tree carries, but you can always make your own too. You don't have to necessarily find them at Dollar Tree. And we're gonna make bookends with the help of some scrap wood. These are one by fours cut down to about four and a half inches long. To get a beach wood look, we're gonna do this little hack using some light gray acrylic paint and a baby wipe. But you could also use a paper towel that you just water down too, that works too. We're gonna dip our baby wipe into the paint and use that as a little wipe to wipe our paint on. It gives it more of a see-through look so you still see the wood grain underneath, but you're getting a sort of weathered wood look as the paint dries. 
Now to put these bookends together, we're gonna use some wood glue, again from Dollar Tree. This is what those blocks look like once they're dry. We're gonna take our wood glue and we're gonna put that right on the end of our flat piece. And we're gonna sit this second piece on top of it to make an L shape. Now it doesn't hurt to use a little bit of hot glue in there too. And that way your hot glue will set up faster and hold this in place while your wood glue dries, which takes again, probably a good 24 hours, but you're gonna get a good solid connection with just glue if you do it this way. You can also throw a couple brad nails in there too, and that's really gonna keep these together. So now that we have two of these or a set, we're gonna use those jute balls from Dollar Tree as the decorative piece for these. And we're just gonna use some hot glue to attach them. My string on one of them was a little bit too long, so I tucked it up underneath the ball and glued it down, and then we're gonna attach it onto the bookend. But you could also cut it completely off or cut it, trim it down, and re-glue it if you wanted it to be shorter. It kind of just worked nicely to coil this up underneath though and make it a little bit shorter that way. These, I love that they were so simple and so quick and easy, but have such a high end look. These definitely look like they come from Pottery Barn or a high end decor store. And these are also just some books that I Dollar Tree DIY'd as decorative pieces to go in between them. But I just absolutely love this look and it's so awesome when you can create something that looks more expensive than it actually was. We're gonna use some of this nautical rope from Dollar Tree, the white kind, that is the cotton kind, to create some simple coasters. These are great for summertime. For the base of these coasters, we're using some stiff felt. Just trace a circle shape and then cut that shape out with your scissors. And then we're gonna come in with our nautical rope and coil this around onto the felt. To do that, you put a little dab of hot glue in the center of the felt and then some around that center piece and continue wrapping your nautical rope into the glue all the way around. You wanna make sure you keep this tight along each other, wrap it all the way around until you run out of felt. And then we're gonna make sure the end is glued down really well and cut the end at an angle. You'll also probably likely have some extra felt around the edges, so you wanna cut that off. And that's all there is to creating a really simple, actual coaster that works because it's a cotton rope it's going to help collect the moisture from the outsides of your drinks so this is great for indoor and outdoor use is there a dollar tree product that you would love to see me hack in the future you can leave those down in the comments below and check the description box to links and products that i will have conveniently for you there i want to thank you all so much for joining me today subscribe if you are new and i will see you in the next one have a creative day